Wczesne popołudnie 16 sierpnia 2018 roku, czwartek, dzień po aresztowaniu Łodsa. Od rana grupa specjalistów w obsłudze materiałów łatwopalnych opracowuje plan wydobycia dzieci ze zbiorników z ropą naftową. Ich ciała znajdują się tam od poniedziałku. Technicy kryminalistyki wydobyli już szanan z glinianej ziemi i wyznaczono natychmiastową sekcję zwłok. W aktach sprawy czytamy raport oficera Konroda. Rozpoczęliśmy poszukiwanie terenu położonego 30 metrów od zbiorników z ropą w miejscu ze świeżo naruszoną ziemią. Około 23.00 natrafiliśmy na ciało dorosłej kobiety. Jej zwłoki uległy procesowi rozkładu. Ciało zakopano w płytkim grobie. Odległość od pośladków do powierzchni gruntu około 20 cm. Usunięcie zwłok nastąpiło o godzinie 010 i lekarz medycyny sądowej hrabstwa Weld przejął odpowiedzialność za zwłoki. W następnym raporcie oficera Kunroda czytamy Przedsiębiorstwa na Darko udostępniło samochody ciężarowe z cysternami i rozpoczęto wypompowywanie ropy do zapasowego zbiornika, a następnie używając węży paliwowych z osadzoną na ich końcu siatką metalową przepompowano ropę do cystern ciężarówek. Po całkowitym opróżnieniu zbiornika 17697 specjaliści w obsłudze materiałów łatwopalnych Hazmat usunęli właz główny i około 15.30 weszli do zbiornika, gdzie znaleźli, jak sądzimy, celestę łoc. Nieletnia miała założoną pieluchę. Ciało całkowicie pokryte ropą było w procesie rozkładu. Lekarz medycyny sądowej hrabstwa Weld przejął odpowiedzialność za zwłoki. Następnie, używając takiej samej metody, technicy Anadarko opróżnili zbiornik 17698. O około 17.50 specjaliści CSP Hazmat weszli do zbiornika. Znaleźli, jak sądzimy, Belę Marie. Lekarz medycyny sądowej przejął odpowiedzialność za zwłoki. A w budynku Komendy Głównej Frederykowskiej Policji Nicole Kessinger odpowiada na zadawane jej pytania. Szef agentów CBI. Nicole jest ważnym świadkiem. Jako druga kobieta mordercy może być źródłem wiedzy dla śledczych, podać motyw zbrodni. Jej data telefoniczna pozwoli wyeliminować tak częste kłamstwa Watsa. Scysja pomiędzy Shannon i matką Łodsa dotyczyła małej Celesty i jej ostrej alergii na orzechy. Czy teściowa zapomniała o chorobie dziecka, czy też wyczuła przesadę w prośbach Shannon? Nie wiadomo. Łodz twierdził, że jego matka uważała alergię za zjawisko wymyślone, ale raczej nie powinniśmy wierzyć Łodsowi. Dość, że na przyjęciu wydanym dla wnucząt deserem dnia był tort orzechowy i lody pistacjowe, łatwo dostępne dla energicznej Sisi, która potrzebowała tylko kilka sekund i małe zamieszanie, by napełnić sobie buzię orzechowymi smakołykami. Wróćmy do akt sprawy, gdzie znajdziemy SMS-y Shannon wysłane trzy dni przed jej śmiercią do koleżanki Eddie o relacji między Watsem i jego rodzicami. Czytamy. Chcieli zobaczyć się z nim i z dziećmi, ale powiedział im, że nie może się wyrwać. To było kłamstwo, bo trzy razy mówiłam mu, żeby poszedł tylko bez dzieci. Nie chciał stwierdził, że chce być z dziećmi. Chris's 
that happened prior to him coming out there, and then she didn't tell him about it. Mm. She just like let it go. Nie jest to prawdą. Akta sprawy przedstawiają SMS-y Shannon wysłane do męża jeszcze przed jego przyjazdem do północnej Karoliny. Oto wersja tego wydarzenia. Łoc przekazał ją agentom podczas rozmowy już w zakładzie karnym w Wisconsin w 2019. Like to kill her or no, just, just, to... just like, like, didn't care. Like, she, she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like people think, oh, you're like it's fine. made up. Like, kind he'll, of thing. Yeah, he'll be fine, he'll just have a rash, he'll be fine. And um, I know it's real, do you know it's serious? Yeah, but um, so did that make you angry to at your mom for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I just got I told her you need to think, you need to like, you know, pay attention to when Shannon called me, it was middle of July or something when she told me all this had happened. Mm -hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while and then they were just like, you know, they just couldn't deal with her anymore. And they, it was it was like a last straw between them, I think. She didn't tell him about it. Mm -hmm. She just like let it go and then he just spent all week trying to figure out why his family was like mm -hmm. not trying to be involved. Is there anything else you think let's let me just back up from that Saturday where you guys had a meal at, at the Lazy Dog to prior for the six weeks that you guys were serious. And um, although your dad's here and I think you're probably pretty comfortable, your relationship with Chris was, can you describe your relationship? I mean, when he was with me, I considered it to be fairly healthy, it was open communication. And it was what I thought was honest and It was very calm. It was respectful. Uh, we got along really well. You know, I thought what we had, it was very comfortable for me. I enjoyed it. I think he did very much as well. You guys, you, six, eight weeks, two months, whatever it was, you guys had an intimate relationship during that time. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're pretty serious. Um, did he ever tell you that he loved you? Yes, he did. Did you ever tell him the same? couple times. Okay. Um, not withstanding that today, because that may those thoughts may have changed for you, but on Monday, did you did you still love him on those days? I think it was something where it was like I, I said it a few times and I meant it, but he definitely felt the urge to say it to me a lot more than I did to him. You know, like I remember when he was in North Carolina and he was like trying to patch things up with his wife and he told me he loved me and I was like, Don't say that to me. Like, don't. Like, don't say those words to me and then go try to make peace with your wife and lay in bed with another woman. Like, just... Wait. So you got, I mean, in the short period of time that you guys were together, he... Yes. Was, became very attached to you. Yes. Very, very I mean, he's attached. He's sending cards. Flowers. Oto jeden z listów miłosnych do Nicoli. Wow. Where do I even start? Nie wiem, gdzie mam zacząć. Od pierwszego dnia, gdy cię zobaczyłem, mój świat zawirował. Pierwszego dnia, gdy wreszcie znalazłem odwagę, by z tobą rozmawiać, zagubiłem się w tych niesamowitych zielonych oczach. I dalej. Neki, będziemy mieli dużo wspólnych pierwszych dni. I wouldn't have wanted them anyways. That's, flowers is enough. You can't, I don't need expensive stuff. Okay. But he becomes very attached. Yes. Um, you guys are talking multiple times a day, at least. You're All the time. You're seeing each other on a regular basis. Yep. And, and his wife is not around, nor are his children, so there's a lot of time for you guys to build your relationship in this first four, four weeks or so. Is that fair? Yeah, and even when she she was back, I mean, it was still like we were still spending time together. Did your friends know about him? Nope. Why? Because it's like he's with two women right now. They don't okay. need to know about so that. So if you had a boyfriend of four to eight, but if you had a steady boyfriend, you would have let people know. I think you told me before we got started that you, you just told your dad about Chris. No, I wouldn't have told them. I wouldn't have told okay. people. It's too early. I mean, people... So you don't tell your friends, hey, I no, got No, because they, you know, people come and go. I But mean, this it, one, you were a little bit more, you said he's with two women. 
Was that one of your considerations for not telling anybody about it? Yes. Well, I mean, it was fair. It wasn't fair to me in the first place. It wasn't fair to her in the first place. It wasn't fair to any of us in the first place. You know, it wasn't fair to his family for him to have an affair. It wasn't fair to me to have him lie to me and make me think that and then still to this day, I don't even know what's a lie and what's not. I don't even know if they were, like, filing for divorce. I don't know if they were putting the house up. I don't even know. I don't even know. Is going to affect me long term. It's like, you know, I'm going to wake up every day and know that, like, this mom and her unborn child and these two little girls are not around anymore. And it breaks my heart. It is so, oh, my God. And any. And then I have to think about, like, the consequences of his actions and how they affect everybody else. Like, all of these, her family's impacted. My name is about to be, like, slandered for probably a while. But I would not be surprised if it's going to be hard to go out in public sometimes for a couple of years. And that really hurts me. I'm just like, this is a horrible, horrible thing. Like, how dare you, you know? And and people aren't going to understand that. You know, they're going to say, oh, you know. You're the woman that had an affair with this man who took out his whole family. And and it's just like, I didn't know. Like, I, I, ugh. It's, he's so disgusting. I'm so ashamed of him and everything. And I just, all oh, those little girls, they're so little. They're so little. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about getting some help for these things, and we can provide that. Okay. And I'm I am sorry because I know it's hard to talk about it. But God, it's, it, it's so sad, and she's pregnant. Oh, they're so little. Like, wow. Why? 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 How? I don't even understand how you could like bring yourself to do that to somebody who's like. step out for a minute all right let's keep going because we're just let's getting let's, to the, like the meat of this let's, whole situation let's get to the phone call on saturday from 9 to 11 uh, what did you guys or pardon me on sunday from 9 to 11 yeah we talked a few times so oh um you know what <clears throat> i still don't remember what we talked about i like honestly like we talked about so much random stuff like um, one Anything? thing I do remember, though, probably nothing of relevance, but, um, usually he talks to me when he's, like, down in the basement in his bed before he goes to bed and before I go to bed, and I could hear the TV on, which I thought was kind of weird. I didn't ask him, and I remember thinking, why the hell is he up? And there's, like, no TV downstairs, so I was like, well, maybe, so I don't no know. no TV in the basement where he usually calls you from? Yeah, and I don't know how many TVs they have. Like, I've never been in their bedroom. It was just weird to me because I was like, why are you watching TV right now? It is like super late. Something I didn't ask you about the house because you've been there twice and it just uh, made me remember. Do you remember how you guys accessed the house? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so once through the garage and I think once through the front door. I think the first time was through the front door, and I think the second time was through the garage. Is there anything unique about either of the doors? Like a unique door? Like Not I know the they door have a itself. camera on their door. Okay, I mean, there's, I know there's a that. camera on the... Which door? I, it's on the front door, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I'm asking I think you. so. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, was, but, did he use a key to access the house? He did not. The first time I went over there, he... Just let me in. And then the second time, do we go through the garage? I don't remember. So, so he was at the house when you went there? Yourself, he right? was at, yeah, Or no. he took you there? He The first time, he was already there, okay. and I met up with him. And the second time, we went there together. So the front door, I asked if he had used a key. He let me in. Okay. So there's a um, keypads where mm-hmm. you can enter access code. Do you remember seeing that on his door? 
I'm like, I want to say vaguely, but to be honest with you, I don't remember. Like, he let me in that day. That's that so, was he so never gave long you, ago. He never gave you the code to access his home? No. Okay. Not at all. Go okay. back to the, the mm. phone call, or where you noticed the television in the background. Of the yeah, phone. I just thought it was weird. And I remember I was thinking, I was like, maybe he's waiting up for her. And then I was like, maybe not. I didn't know. I didn't. It wasn't something that, like, alerted me. So anything anything important that you recall during that conversation about the children, about his wife, about what he was doing the next day, what he had planned, anything like that? No. Did he tell you any of that information? I remember he told me he had to go to the field and not to the office on Monday morning. Okay. Did he specifically say where he needed to go on Monday morning? No, I don't ask him for those sites. There's like, Anna Darko's got like thousands of sites. Do you know what he did Sunday during the day? Um... I don't even know what I did on Sunday during the day. <laughs> did you guys have any conversations on Saturday night during your meal, what he might be doing on Sunday? I'm sure we did. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank because I haven't slept. Did, any other conversation that makes sense? In all honesty, if it doesn't stand out to me now, today? it probably That's wasn't fine. relevant. I remember he was busy that day and we didn't talk that much. And then I, I clocked out at three is what my time card says. And I got home to go meet my buddy. One of my good friends was coming over my house. And he actually has a key to my house. So he was actually there when I got there. And Who's that? My friend Jim. Um, and so Jim came over. And I got home. He was there. And um, I remember, like, briefly after he got there, I checked my texts. I mean, briefly after I met up with Jim, I, like, glanced at my texts, and Chris said something about, like, my family's not home, or, like, my wife and kids aren't home, like, something to that effect. I don't know what's up with that, but that's when he sends that to me, and... Um, so you're saying that he, he would have known that you would have had your phone available to you and not been at work when he sent you that text message? Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. So looking back at it, you think it was purposefully sent at that time? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm just asking your feeling on that. Yes, and then he said, call me when you can. And I was There was like, no other communication between you and him that morning, on Monday morning? Well, there, there was, but it was like random. It, like, but nothing about this event? No, 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 no. About, like, my, mom, my wife's missing or no. my, anything? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And you knew he wasn't coming to the office because he had told you that Sunday night. Like, but like I'm saying, like, we don't really, the only reason we interact was kind of like by an off chance thing. Like, I don't work with him. Yeah, we talked like randomly throughout the day, but it was really sporadic and he seemed pretty busy. So we didn't talk too much um, until about 345, then sent that text to me. And yes, he does know that I will be home at that point. And, I dragged asked, into and, this. and I'm not really concerned uh, about your location. Um, I think we already have your cell phone records. Um, did they ask for consent to get cell phone records? That'll probably be done by warrant. If Isn't we wanted, that what you just did? Nope. What I'm talking about is your movement. Oh. Um, by GPS or by cell phone tower to show where you were. Obviously, and I don't want to cause you concern, we want to know where you were that day, too. You're dating a man who did some egregious stuff, and we want to put... We want to show that you were never near him that day, period. I mean, you guys so, can track my no, stuff. No, I mean, <laughs> that that was something we will have to get a warrant for anyways. The, I'm just saying, if if we asked for it, would you have yeah, any objections you, to that? No, you can have right. it. So, um, if well, I'm a pretty boring person, well, I don't know It sounds like you just places. went to work that day, and then you came home, and you were there at 345. Yeah, like give or day. take like five yeah, minutes. But, but yeah, so 345. I meet Jim there. Yeah, I would and totally. So run. Jim is a understand from an investigative point. He could be a person who could say, "Yeah, I was there at three forty-five. I don't. He doesn't know Chris. He doesn't know anything. He could say, "Yeah, she came in at three forty-five. Done. Totally. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't have to ask anything more than, "Hi, my name's Kevin. I'm, I'm uh, or, or Jim. And I'm not saying Jim you have alone. to give it to him. Just leave Jim but alone. If, Jim if does not need to be wrapped point, up in this. If at some point I needed Jim's info to, would you? You tell can me have who them. Is? I will give them to you. Um, yeah, so anyways, Chris was like, call me. And this is the 345 text. 
Yeah, he sent me, like, a few. There were, I think there was three of them, and I don't remember what the other one said, but something about, like, yeah, my family's gone, but call me when you can, or have, call me when you have a chance. Something to that effect. And so when he told me, call me, I was, like, kind of alerted, where I was like, okay, what's going on? Um, but first when he told me, like, his family was, like, not home, that didn't really seem odd to me that his family wasn't home. It was really vague. I'm like, okay, like, are they at the grocery store? Like, elaborate. He says, call me, so I'm concerned. And then he's really vague, so I'm like, maybe he just wants to talk to me? I don't know. I think it took me a little while to, like, really process the severity of the situation. Emergency. No, no. I mean, it just, it was the way he said it. And I was like, okay. And then I stepped outside and I called him. He didn't answer the phone. And then he texted me back. Or no. Did he answer the phone? I don't remember. I think he missed my call and then he called me back. Or he just answered. Either way, it was a very short talk to him where he was just like, I have to go. The cops are here. And I don't remember if he said that on the phone or over text. And he was just saying, like, they weren't there and that her friend Nikki was there and that her friend Nikki had called the cops. And I'm like, why would this girl call the cops? And he was like, I don't know, he just started like giving me details about stuff and I don't remember what order, but he was saying like Nikki was really upset and that the cops were there and that they were like searching the house and I was just like, what? You know, like what? Why? And he was telling me that um, they had like had a disagreement or something like that and then um, he told me like she was gonna go to a friend's house and I was like okay well maybe she left you know maybe she just like went to her friends or I think he was the one that told me that her cell phone and her purse were still there he told you her I, cell phone and purse were still there I think he did I don't remember I what's the got. significance of that in your mind at that time at that point I thought this woman was really trying to get out of this house that's what I thought, because he said that they'd had a disagreement, and I mean, I leave my cell phone at when home. He sometimes. said disagreement. What did he tell you? What it was about, or not at that point? Not, and I'm just thinking, like, well, maybe she was in a rush, you know, like maybe she was just like, I'm going to my friends. I'm leaving my cell phone here because I don't want you calling. Me. It wasn't even that weird to me that she left her phone just because I leave my phone, but it was weird to me that she left her purse. But knowing the fact that that girl was like always on her phone. Then, yeah, I guess it is kind of odd. Well, she lived on her phone, I think, uh, yeah. pretty much, is my understanding of her and a phone. So, yeah. I don't know if you knew that. I did. Until prior to the media stuff, or just from Chris. I did. So, did that, so did that strike you as odd? But you were I thinking know. maybe I mean, she just get, left. I just thought she needed to, like, get away from the situation. Let's go back to the phone calls on Monday afternoon. So he's, like, texting me a lot of this information, and I'm starting to kind of freak out. And it's not like I'm freaked out, like, oh, she got murdered. I mean, that is not what I thought. It's like, okay, the cop thing was kind of weird. But he's like, Nikki insisted they call the cops. Nikki insisted they call the cops. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm just trying to figure out, well, like, what role does this woman play in this situation? Like, is she... Did you know who she was? No, I don't know any of his people. Like, I started asking him, I was like, well, where do you think your wife is at? And he's like, I think she'll be back tonight. Like, I think she's, like, out with somebody. And he was telling me that they had had a disagreement. Did he tell you the kids were missing as well? Yes, I knew. Okay. I mean, which made sense to me because I was like, well, if you were at work all day. He didn't tell me he got home early. He didn't say that to me. So, I mean, it made sense. Like, if she's going to leave, they should probably go with her. Um... Łoc przedstawiał Nikoli swoje alter ego, a ona w nie wierzyła. Od tych sierpniowych rozmów z policją wiele zmieniło się w życiu Nikoli. Kawalkadę jej kłopotów rozpoczęła zaproponowana, by nie powiedzieć wymuszona rezygnacja z pracy, a następnie prośba o opuszczenie wynajmowanego mieszkania i wreszcie zdiagnozowana depresja. Jej decyzja zatem o opuszczeniu stanu i zmianie nazwiska była naturalnym następstwem. Łoc okłamywał obydwie swoje kobiety. On and on and on. Uh, I said, 